Hello and welcome to the One Stop Co-op Shop Streamed, your one stop for co-op news and playthroughs. And today we are playing through Dwellings of Eldervale. And specifically we're actually playing the Ghosts of Eldervale solo mode. So let's find out a little bit about the world of Eldervale. Um, read a little bit of flavor text here. Long ago there was a thriving kingdom in a sprawling city, breathing landscapes, and unparalleled magic known as Eldervale. It was a place of great wealth and diversity powered by mystical orbs and elemental energy. At the height of its power, Eldervale was destroyed by a cataclysm of magical energy. Left in ruins, the realm of Eldervale were forgotten. In a game of Dwellings of Eldervale, you control a faction of mythical beings returning to Eldervale to rediscover its treasures, harness its powers, and ultimately settle here by building dwellings. But it won't be easy as the other factions have the same intentions, and powerful monsters still lurk in these forgotten lands. Isn't it always funny how that happens? First of all, how there's always like a cataclysm or something that destroys it, and then everybody at the same time all decides to come back. But this theme we've seen a hundred times before, um, not exactly like this, but uh, you know, it always seems to be the case. All right, so let's learn a little bit about the Ghosts of Eldervale. So this is the solo game. Uh, for dwelling so you're basically because there's not other players in the game this is typically a competitive game but you are in the solo game going against the ghosts of El uh, Eldervale so the ghosts of Eldervale had haunted these ruins for thousands of years now disturbed by unwelcome intruders they will not go quietly to thwart the invaders the ghosts hide treasures haunt realms with ghostly dwellings and if need be banish the living to the underworld so they are going to be the uh, competitor. They're going against us. And actually the AI is pretty straightforward. The game is played on this board here. And the game itself is actually very straightforward. When we go over to the quick reference sheet, basically on your turn, you're gonna do one of two things. You're either gonna place a unit or you're going to regroup. And that's it. You obviously have some free actions and other stuff you can do. But when you're placing a unit, you basically place it on the board and do the action there which might trigger a fight if there's either monsters, which we start with an iron golem on the board, so we do start with a monster, or if there are other players in the uh, space you decide to go to. There are two different types of spaces. There are these elemental spaces over here, which when you go there, you're just gonna take one of the tokens from the space. And there are also these ruins here, and each of the ruins has a different power, which we'll talk about what they do as the game goes on. Uh, but one of the key factors is you're fighting over these different elements. In each game, you're going to play with two more elements than there are players. And the four elements we're playing with this game are on the ghost board, because they are actually going to claim some of the elements as the game goes on as well. So if they go to these realms that have these tokens, they're going to take the tokens and put them on their player board based on whatever color element they're going, and then they're going to get benefits as it goes along as well. So I'm not going to go too much in depth on how the AI plays. We'll kind of get to it. But just know wherever we place, this uh, ghost marker is going to get placed. And that then when we do the AI turn, we're going to roll a dice for them. And, you know, one, two, three, they're going to do this action. Four, five, they're going to do this action. Six, they're going to do this action. Actually, when I hit do ghost turn, it's going to handle all of that for us. But bottom line, it's going to tell you where the little ghost marker is on the board. And it's going to tell you how they place. So in this situation, if I had placed here, they would place one of their people and actually the first person uh, on top of this space in that first space over here. In this situation, they do the same thing, except they're gonna go, again, if we we're here, they would have placed to the top right of where we currently are. And this one also says, get a new adventure card. So based on what they rolled, if they rolled a four or five, they're gonna get one of these two types of adventure cards. So they'd come right up here. We're gonna be competing over these as well, which also, deal with the elements included in this game. Uh, so they're gonna be grabbing these cards as well. And you'll see what these cards are, a little bit of a tableau building element. As we pull our workers off the board, we're gonna actually be able to place them on these cards. Plus these cards are gonna work for end game scoring as well. Uh, and then this card right here, they are going to place here and then they're gonna construct a dwelling. You, they always start by constructing on the place they placed and then going around, they're looking. So again, if we had placed our worker here, they would put their person here, as you can see, to the upper right, and they would try to construct a dwelling. Now they cannot, because this is a ruins, you can only construct dwellings on the elemental realms. So the elemental realms are kind of where you're gonna be fighting for to try to place different guys and get those special abilities. 
you will notice on these tokens here, there are different uh, markers, different uh, resources you're getting. Those are also shown in the lower right hand corner of the screen. And actually I'm just realizing in my screen, they won't be. So I went ahead and moved this over a little bit. Um, and so in the lower right hand corner here, you are going to see the different elements that are present in the game. Uh, and we will be getting those and those elements are described right here. You have, you have gems, you have potions, scrolls, tools, swords, gold, and magical cards. So all of these are the different resources in the game. Gold is a wild resource and cards are these cards you have in your hand. So this is something else you can do on your turn. In addition to your one action, you're going to be playing cards like fireballs will let you play before you're rolling dice in a battle. For this battle, roll two additional dice or holy word. This is a spell. You'll notice there are two things at the top there. There's a scroll and one of the elements. If you are on this elemental track here, which we are not. I believe that's the ghost that's on there. Yes. So the ghost is playing is white. So they are on this elemental track so they could cast a spell. Now, by the way, the ghosts do not cast spells. Um, but just as a point of reference, if you do, if you are not on that track, so there's only one symbol on that card, you'll notice this card is the same thing, but there are three symbols on this card here. So in this situation, you would have to have be up to the third spot on the track or you can pay the cost in the upper left-hand corner. So if you are not on the track, then you can pay a scroll for this one. If you're not on the third spot of the track in this situation, you would have to pay two scrolls to cast this spell. Now, these cards are also resources. And this one is a end game, Vast Empire at the end of the game, score based on the number of dwelling, dwellings you built. So you'll get victory points for that as well. And then this one's healing on your turn, gain a victory point for each of your units in the underworld. So there is going to be some fighting. Your guys are going to get sent to the underworld. Well, in this situation, you get to heal them and return them to your ready area, which is on your player board. So we are going to start. There are four different types of workers in the game. There are just regular workers, which you start with three of. There's warriors, wizards, and dragons. And there are actually 16 factions in the game. Each is going to be associated with a different element. As you can see, we are associated with water, and that's why we have water. We are the pirates of the Nightmare Cove. And the only differences between the factions, everybody has wor uh, workers. Again, you can get up to six workers, and you'll see these uh, little triangles over here you put those on top of your workers to make them into dwellings so you can make up to six dwellings throughout the game and that's one of the game end conditions you can also have one warrior one wizard uh oh i'm sorry that's just a worker you can have a warrior a wizard or a dragon as well yes that is correct you can have dragons in the game and the differences between the faction are basically two of your different units will get special abilities and mine is cannoneers my warriors, when I, uh, my one warrior, I guess, will be able to join fights from adjacent without having to go in them. Uh, and my ship captain, the wizard, can be placed on some place where I already have a unit. So this is kind of worker placement where you're putting your units around the board. Normally, if you're on a space, you have to place adjacent to that space. Um, but the nice part is the wizard for this faction can go on the same place. So I can take the same action twice, which is typically not allowed. So I'm going to try to get that wizard pretty early. And you can see on the summary card, it tells you how to pay for different units. We'll get to all that later. Um, but bottom line is I'm going to need to gather another potion, which I'm going to want to do pretty early to get that wizard out. Um, I already have one scroll, one potion. So I'm going to want to get another potion to get him out. But let's see how quickly and easily this game really does play. All right, so on your turn, again, you take one of these. And let's see. I want, I'd like to build dwellings. I mean, as early as possible, I, I like to build dwellings in the game. So if I go here, so this dwelling would cost me two scrolls. So that's pretty expensive. Now, normally, if I placed here, this would start a combat. And this actually gives me two scrolls. So this is not a bad place to go. Normally when I'd place here, it would start a combat, but because we are peaceful, when we first enter the first turn before we ever pull our uh, workers off of the board, we get a peaceful turn. So there will be no combats initiated. With that being said, I am gonna place here, which you'll notice the ghost followed me right in. And all you do is take the scrolls right off the board. And that's it, literally, oops. Go to my board and i place this here and i can hold up to four of these scrolls before i have to do anything i could either turn them in 
and just get two scrolls at any point. Uh, I could also slot them into these square spots on my board. So you'll see later, but whenever I can gather from this space, normally I'd get a potion. Well, if I put this here, I would actually gather two scrolls every time I gathered from this spot. So that's pretty good. Um, but you'll see how all that works. All right, so with that being said, we did our turn. The ghost is here. Let's see what the ghost does. All right, ghost cannot, so they rolled a six. So this is the six card that they rolled. It says construct a dwelling. So they're gonna to go to the upper right and they're gonna to try to construct a dwelling. So you'll notice this is where the ghost was. They placed their player to the upper right. But again, this is not an elemental plane so they cannot construct a dwelling there. So I actually did that on purpose because I noticed the only place that built a dwelling was to the upper right. And so I gave them a spot I knew they couldn't build on. I didn't want them to take one of these dwelling spots early in the game. The nice part about this, or the bad part about this is when they pull their workers off eventually, they get two victory points for every worker that is on one of these ruins. Uh, I'm sorry, I po pointed at this one, but this is not, this is an LMO. All right, so let's see what their new card is. They're gonna have an undead monster. Choose one destroyed monster and return it to its lair. Well, thankfully we're not gonna have any fighting. So hopefully they roll a six again so they can get that uh, monster on the board. Um, but they're not, none of these other things will build a dwelling. So I'm not going to worry too much about where I place, but I do have to place adjacent to someplace I've already been. Uh, we talked about how I want to get potions. Let's see. So this would let me change two things. So that's what this ruin does. Change two things into two gold and gold is a wild resource. So that's always good to get. So I could change two other things I don't need right now into two gold. This would allow me to build a dwelling. Well, I can't build a dwelling yet because I don't have enough resources to build the one I want. Um, this costs three diamonds up here. Holy moly, um, which is pretty expensive, but it gives me the option to either get a card or get a diamond or um, sword here. So I think I'm gonna take this one, just put it here and kind of hold on to it for now. So let's do the ghost turn. They rolled a six again. Nice, there are no destroyed monsters. So they went ahead and placed their worker down. Oh no, that one didn't have a place a worker option. So if you see here, oh, it says place at the portal. I'm sorry. So they had to place on the portal no matter where I was and any units or other monsters are sent to the underworld. So that is nothing going on. Uh, they did place their first unit there. So if you notice under the six, they had a normal worker and then a wizard. If they roll a six again, they're gonna pull all their stuff off the board. And right now that will score them points. They get two points for each person that's in the in a ruins uh, when they pull off the board. So if they roll another six, that'll happen. If not, then they're gonna start pulling, you know, workers off of these spaces and placing them. Uh, and if when they pull their stuff off the board, they don't do the rest of the stuff on the card. All right, so as you can see, Again, fairly straightforward. Now that I'm done mostly explaining the rules, I will hopefully get to start playing a little faster. Let's see. I have to be adjacent to one of the places I already am. This place is nice because it lets you buy these cards up top here, um, which, let's see, actually, what are the costs of the ones showing? So I got one that's two scrolls. Remember, I got a scroll. Ooh, and this will give me a potion. And if I am first place, it will give me something else. That is an interesting decision because I do have that double scroll thing here. So I could turn in those two scrolls without hurting myself much. That seems too good to pass up. I may actually do this. So this, so I said there's two ways to trigger the end game. Maybe I didn't say that. I, I mentioned one of them though. If you build all six of your dwellings, the other way is if you place out all the land tiles. Um, and this is the space that starts placing land tiles out. Um, and then I could buy up to two of these. So I could buy that one uh, and Nimbus Gates. So this is on the blue track. So this would move me up this track. The nice part is I would be in the lead. Yeah, you know, I think I'm actually gonna do that, believe it or not. All right, so gonna come here. This would normally again, start a fight. Well, you always get to do the action. So let me be clear here. You always get to do this action and then a fight would start here uh, with their warrior against my warriors. And 
Uh, so actually, there are people in the space against mine. And you'll notice each person has a combat strength. I'm not going to get into it, but basically workers each provide one dice, warriors two dice, one for the wizard, and three for the dragon. I am not going to... Uh, so a fight doesn't start here, though, because we're still in peaceful times. Now, in one second, my next turn, because I have no more workers to go, when I pull my workers off the board, then we are have the ability to start fights and the monsters are going to start chasing us down too. So we're going to have to be really careful about where we place going forward. All right, well, let's see. First things first, I am going to place one of these dwelling tiles. So I flip it over and I decide where I want to place it. All righty. I think I am going to place this. I want to place it near where I'm going to build a dwelling and I'm going to build a dwelling right here. The reason for that is your dwellings help you with combat strength as well. So I'm going to build it here. And if you'll notice, it populated with tiles from up here. Um, so that's what these stacks of tiles are for. And that is that. That's my turn. Let's do see what the ghost do. does. Excuse. <laughs> so let's see what the ghost does. <laughs> Do's. Nice. All right, so the ghost rolled a two, and let's see what that did. That just placed to the lower right of where I am. So you'll notice uh, I placed over here to the lower right is here. They placed on the fortress. And again, they don't do anything with that. They just place there currently. Even if they could have built a dwelling, there's literally none of their workers on an adjacent space. So they couldn't have built the dwelling anyway. But again, when they pull these people off, they're gonna get victory points. All right. So those are the placing actions. Let's see what a, uh, what the heck is that called? Returning your workers action is called. That is the regroup phase. So first thing you do is retrieve all your units, but you do it one at a time. And as you do, oh, oh my gosh. Sorry, I've been talking so much, I forgot. After I placed the place, I was gonna buy one to two different elemental cards up here. So I'm gonna buy this one which does a couple of things. All right, so when I do this, I have to get rid of this token now because I had to spend two scrolls to buy this. And then let's see, am I gonna buy anything else? Well, I can't really afford anything else. I guess I could afford this two gem one. Maybe I do it. Do I just go all in turn one? I think I do. So I'm gonna get rid of this token, uh, which would give me a gem or a sword. I'm gonna get rid of my gem over here and then i'm going to buy this one as well now after i'm all done the buying phase and i am basically for all intents and purposes done because i could buy up to two things then you flip back over the top oops just the top card not the whole deck of cards all right so now i've done that but when i bought these i also increased my elemental power on the board so i'm actually going to get one point in fire and one in wind on the board so let's go over here. Here are my tokens down at the bottom here. So I'm gonna get one point in fire over here and one point in wind, which is right here. All right, so I am on three of the tracks. Each of these tracks, I'm gonna score two points per for my tokens being on the tracks. And as I get higher and higher up, I'm gonna score more. But the other thing you get from that is you score two points for everything associated with that. That is both dwellings on the board and cards in your tableau here. All right, so that was last turn. So now the AI had done their third turn. Now I get to pull mine off in the order I would like to. So the first one I'm gonna pull off is the one from the dungeon. I'm gonna pull them off and I'm going to go, I could go to any of these things here, or you have three different things on your main board. So this will give me one potion, same as this spot right here. But you notice there's a square here, just like here. Here, it would replace whatever's there. This one says, if I am in first place in wind, which currently I am, remember if we're when we were looking on the wind board, I'm the only one here. So if I am first place on this board, then... I get to also do whatever token is in here. Now I don't have a token in there, so it doesn't really matter at this point. They're both worth one potion to me. So I'm just going to gain one potion for placing that character there. Um, and that is one worker off the board. I'm going to pull my next worker off the board. I'm going to pull this one off. And when I pull them off, I am going to the dwell action. Now dwelling can be done here or it can be done at the mill on the board. 
but I'm going to do it when I pull mine off. I'm going to do the dwell action. So when you do the dwell action, you pay the cost of this dwelling, which in this situation is one scroll. So I am going to pay one scroll. And I get to turn this person into a dwelling. Oh, that just moved them. They should not have moved because when you pull off the board, that does not move the ghost. Uh, so I'm turning them into a dwelling though. I have to pay a one scroll to do that, which I did and grab one of my dwellings. And I have now built a dwelling. Now, unfortunately, of course, I cannot pull this person off the board now. And not only can I not pull this person off the board, but I also don't get to uh, use them in the following turn. So I'm only gonna have two workers now to be moving around the board, but I did build this dwelling. So I actually move up on this track as well. So. As you can see, there are only four tokens. That works even in three and four player games when there are more elements in the game. So right now we only have th four elements in the game. So I do have a marker on each of those. Um, but in a higher player count game, you're only gonna be able to get on four of these no matter what, no matter how many total times, uh, no matter how many elements are in the game, you'll only be able to place on four of them. So, but I am on all four element tracks, which is good and bad, right? Because it gets me two points per, but at the same time, I'm also diversified. So at the end of the game, because I have a dwelling on a one point thing. Now, if you if I built here, it would have cost me more, but I actually would have gotten two up on that elemental track and it would have been a two times multiplier at the end of the game uh, as well. Here, I've got one of this type of element. I've got one of my home element. I got one of wind and I got one of fire. So I'm diversified. I have literally one of every type of element. So after I've done taken all my workers off the board, which I have, I've either taken them all off or turned them into dwellings, which I did. Um, then you reset these back to your player board. And remember, I was trying to build or summon a wizard. Uh, I still would like to do that. So I did use all my scrolls, unfortunately. So I'm gonna try to find a way to get a scroll and maybe slot it into one of these spots because I am first in fire and wind currently. So that will let me, um, work on this but the other thing that just happens is because it's the first time i pulled my guys off the board i put myself on the glory track once all players are on the glory track over here then we can start combat so now if we place next to a monster monster is going to move in start a fight um so going forward that's what's going to happen so let's go ahead and do our ghost turn they rolled a three the ghost reshuffle do, 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 do. So their three card must have said reshuffle. So they pulled something off of here. And let's see, I can go down to the chat here. You guys might not be able to see this because off to the left of the screen. Ghost roll three, placing unit on the fortress. So, oh, they got a second unit here on the fortress, causing the iron golem to rush in and triggering a battle. The ghost reshuffle. Okay, so the iron golem is going to go in and start a battle. I'm actually glad I checked the text on that. So, Iron Golem starts a battle. You will see your first battle. The ghosts, their special rules are they always bring everybody in for every battle. So they now have three uh, workers in this spot to do battle with the Iron Golem. Unfortunately for them, the Iron Golem is invulnerable. So workers add no battle dice to a battle with the Iron Golem and spells cannot be used. So remember this fireball that would have given us two extra dice in a battle? Nope, can't be done. So he's gonna roll four dice, the Iron Golem is, and because all they have here is workers. Now, if they pulled the wizard in, the wizard would have added combat strength, but nope, that's not the way it works. Ghost roll the dice, guess what? That's a whole lot of nothing right there. So no, uh, or not a whole lot of nothing. The Iron Golem does, kills all the workers. So the way combat works is, is all or nothing. And remember, it's after you trigger the space, so it's after you do the action now. Again, the AI, the ghosts don't trigger actions, but um, it would normally be after they trigger the action, you roll for a combat. And the way it works is whoever has the highest single dice wins the combat. If it's tied, you go to the second dice and whoever has the second highest wins and so on and so on. So we're gonna take all of these ghosts and put them in the underworld over here. Now the ghosts have a special power, which says that they, when they are fighting in battle, they not only use everybody that they have on the board, but they also get the combat strength of everybody in the underworld. So it's not necessarily a great thing for me that they have all those units in the underworld, because if I do end up getting in a fight with them, 
then um, I'm going to have to fight against all those as well. But the good news is each of these players on the board would have been worth two victory points when coming off of one of the ruins. But when they get them coming out of the underworld, it's only worth one victory point to the AI. So that actually did end up helping me in the long run. All right. So back to my placement. I'm going to take one of these people. And my goal this time is really to, I need to get a scroll. So I want to, I actually have a couple of goals here. I need to get the right tokens so that I can uh, really start powering those actions I have. So I'm going to go here to grab this token because I really want to start slotting these in. I don't have to do it now. I'm going to do it when I pull off because I want to see where I've got the majority. But the other goal is I need to get scrolls so I can build a wizard because I definitely want to get a wizard because again, normally I'd have to place adjacent to a place that I've already placed. But if I had a wizard, I could actually go right back in here and take the, that token again. So the wizard is in, in this faction specifically, pirates gets to go in the same place. That is not true for anybody else. The normal nice part about the wizard is they can all teleport, which means they can typically go in any blank space on the board um, when you're placing them. Warriors, the nice part is normally for your first placement, you cannot place where there is another person. Warriors can go right in where there are other people with your first placement. And dragons have the flight ability. They can jump up to two spaces away from one of your players. Um, but the nice part about my wizard, again, is because they're the captain, you may choose to place your wizard in a realm occupied by your own units. So you can trigger the same place twice, which is kind of nice. Um, so I'm looking forward to getting that wizard. So I did get the token, which will get me a scroll, which is exactly what I need to get that wizard. So let's do the AI turn and see what it does. All right, ghost gain a water adventure card. So let's see what happens. All right, so they place the upper right and they gained an adventure card. So they got a water powered adventure card. The way they do it again, because they rolled a uh, three, they, they take it from this row. They added one here because they have one element and they put themselves up on the water element track on the board. Uh, so they are now here. They are also here with me in this one. This is the only element I don't know what it is. I should be able to figure it out. Sun, spring, I don't know. Um, but the other three that we're playing with, that's obviously fire, that's wind, and that's water. Yeah, I'm not sure what this one is. I mean, this one, well, this is chaos, so this is like order. Yeah, I'm not sure what these two are. Um, but, I mean, it's easily look up a bowl in the book, but I'm not going to do that right now. But anyway, uh, so those are the elements that we're playing with. Now, the nice part also is when you're playing two players, you're going to get random four every time you play. So they won't be the same. And of course, these tiles are going to come out differently. So I think there is a lot of variety from game to game. And these monsters that we're playing with are all based on the elements that we're playing with. So like Iron Golem is not going to be in every game, just in this one. All right, so let's, let me read what the AI did. Uh, ghosts roll four, placing unit in the air realm, gaining the air treasure token, and triggering a battle with the ghosts. All right, so where did they place? Oh, they placed right on me. So again, they bring all of their units in. So they roll one, two dice, plus they get everybody in the underworld. So that's three more. So they're actually gonna roll five dice to me who only rolls one dice because I have one person there. The other ways to get dice beside looking at your faction board and getting as many dice as they have listed under them is you get dice for factions, your factions adjacent. So if we were fighting adjacent to my faction over here, then we would have gotten, um, I would have gotten an extra dice. Now I can do a fireball, which would give me two extra dice, but that's still only three. I'm just gonna lose this battle and not worry too much about it. Um, who knows? I mean, maybe I roll a six. It's always possible. And so I rolled a two. So again, you compare the highest dice. So they're six to my two. Even if I had rolled a six here, six to six, their second highest dice would have been a four and I don't have one. So I die. So the negative of this is now I cannot pull my, uh, oops, that's not me. That was not me at all. This one's me. Uh, the, so the negative of this is I cannot now pull this warrior or worker off the board to trigger one of these actions, which is actually a real big negative. 
Um, but the positive is as soon as I place this in, I get a sword. So the other thing I forgot to say is I could have discarded swords to get extra dice too. So in theory, I could have gotten two extra dice from my fireball and I could have discarded a sword to get a fourth dice, but I still would have been four to five. And I just didn't want to spend that many resources on a battle that looked not hopeless, but I still would have been undervalued in it. Um, so I didn't think it was worth it. All right, so let's take my next action. Now, placing adjacent to them does not trigger them, but again, I have the ability to place anywhere I want on the board now. Huh, I think I'm gonna place down here, kind of far away from whatever's going on. Now, they may end up attacking me here. Um, let's see what the odds are, actually. Oh no, because two of them, they place in a specific place. This is the only one. So if they roll four or five, they are gonna place on my spot and they are gonna end up attacking me. But let's see what the ghosts do. They did roll a five. All right, so they ended up on my spot. It's going to, uh, so they took one of the treasure tokens off of here and they are gonna trigger a battle. So it's not as desperate this time. Um, I mean, I guess it's only one dice less for them, but uh, let's see how this works. So they have one dice here plus three in the underworld. So they have four total. Now, normally players don't get dice from the underworld. The only reason they get it is because uh, they're the ghost player. So I get one dice from a character, one for being adjacent to one of my dwellings. If I had had two dwellings, which, oh, forgot something. Whenever you built a dwelling, you score victory points. Let me go back a little bit here before I do this combat. So when I built this dwelling, you'll notice on the board, it even shows it here. You get two victory points for every ruin next to you and two points for every other dwelling built next to you. So when I built this, I would have gotten two, four, six victory points because those are all ruins. So sorry about that. I am going to get six victory points. I start at one, I'm going to seven. Uh, as first player, you start with one victory point. Second player starts with two. Now back to this battle here. So right now I have two dice to their four. I am gonna use my fireball. I wanna stay on the board because I wanna be able to do something um, at least when I pull my character off. So I'm gonna use this fireball which gives me two more dice. And then I got some swords I could use also. So I will use one of my two swords to give me a little bit of an advantage. I'm not gonna use both of them. Um, and that will get me uh, one extra dice in them. So let's roll them up and see how this combat resolves. So I got a six, they have a five as their highest. So I win the combat. All right, so they get sent to the underworld and I am still on the board. So that was the AI's turn back to mine. I have to, believe it or not, pull my workers off again already. Um, now, where am I in the lead still? So I'm in the lead in air, but not water. For these doorways here, if I'm in the lead in fire or air, so I'm gonna go and pull my worker off and place them here. But before I do that, as one of my free actions, I'm gonna slot one of these tokens in. So I'm gonna slot this one in. So in addition to getting a potion, which I definitely do get, I am also gonna get either a scroll or a sword. In this situation, I'm gonna take a scroll. Cause again, I wanna build this wizard, which I haven't been able to do yet. If I had a second worker on the board, I could have, because I could have then gone to the summon space with my other one, but nope. So this, worker does come right back to my board from the underworld and then this worker comes to my board from the underworld so the order of retrieving your people from the board let's see where it was at over here so first you retrieve all units from the board one at a time then you return them from the underworld to your ready area then you return them from your tableau to your ready area so those are the ones you pulled off here that went to your tableau then you pull them off and then you return mercenaries to the supply so if you had temporary mercenaries you would return them but we're not playing with mercenaries. That's an expansion. And that's the other thing. This game has tons of mini little expansions. Uh, all right, so that was our turn. Literally, now we do a ghost turn. Ghost roll four, placing unit in the fire realm and gaining a fire token. All right, so they placed here on this fire realm because that's where their ghost was. Uh, they played this card and all it did was place something on the fire realm. So they go right there. Does not pull the monster. Only if you build adjacent to the monster does it pull it. But if I want to go back here now, well, first of all, I can't with my first placement. 
because uh, you can't place where there are already units on the board. But second of all, I'd have to fight a dragon, which uh, nobody wants to fight a dragon. Uh, yeah, they have three dice, just base. Uh, but I still have my two people only. I really, really want to build a wizard. So where do I build units? That is here. The portal is where you recruit units. Now, if I place here with my first placement, that is going to trigger this monster coming and attacking me. And remember, the Iron Golem ignores um, regular workers. So that's not good. I can't place here with my first action, even though I might like to. It would trigger a battle, but I can't because there's enemy units there. I eventually want to place here, though. So I'm going to place right here, and I'm going to summon my wizard right now. So I can take that as an action in my tableau, as you remember, the summon action, but I can also do it there. So the cost of my wizard is do, 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 do on the board here. So two potions and one scroll. So here's my one scroll. Here's my two potions. I've spent all that. By the way, the maximum of any one resource you can have at a time is five. So you can have five of each resource, um, but then you can't hold it any more than that. Uh, so I spent that, I get my wizard and they go right in my ready area, it's ready to act. So that was my turn. Let's see what the ghosts do. The ghosts roll a four and regroup. Okay. So why did they regroup? Because the dragon, you remember we just placed on the board was their last unit of that section. When they rolled a four again, they didn't have any units to do. So they totally ignored whatever this card would have said to do. Don't do it at all and just pull all their units off the board. Now, this is where they score. They get one point for each person in the that they have in the underworld and two points for each that they had on one of these spots over here. Well, they had four in the underworld, but they had none on any of these spots. So those would have been two points each. So they only got four points for pulling off the board. So that was actually pretty good for me and now, remember how a second ago I couldn't have gone here, it would have started a fight? I'm not gonna start a fight now, so I'm going there. All right, so I go here and I get this tile, which is two potions. Now, all of the tiles are gone from here, so whenever we go there, we just get a scroll. But that's it for that turn, let's do the ghost turn. All right, they rolled a four, placing unit on the mill. Um, do, 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 do and there is no place that they can go. So the tile that they had gotten was this one. So it says, place it right on the mill. Choose an elemental realm that is occupied by a ghost worker that does not already contain a dwelling and construct a dwelling. Well, I got super lucky because they had just pulled all their workers off the board. So they had no workers on elemental realms on the board. So that worked out really, really well. This is pretty good. Uh, for any two resources, I can get three cards and then I'll have to discard one. So that's how you get more magic cards in your hand, which as you can see, could be end game scoring. They could be spells for two resources. That's pretty good. But placing here is pretty good too. Cause I can actually just get a card every time. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to place my wizard do, do, do. even though they can go into place. I've already been, I don't really want to go anywhere. I've already been. The other thing is they can be placed on anywhere on the board that doesn't contain an enemy unit because they're the wizard. They don't have to be adjacent. So I could place the wizard down here. If I wanted, I would get one um, gem from that, but instead I'm going to get this. And again, it's not a card. I could discard it to get a card right away, but actually I'm thinking about slotting it in and getting a card every single time I take this action. When I pull my people off the board, uh, the max card hand size is seven, but that's uh, you, you evaluate at the, the end of your turn. All right. So I did my action. They are going to do their action. So ghost rolls a two. They place on the dungeon, um, do, 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 causing the iron golem to rush in, triggering a battle. The ghosts gain a water adventure card and uh, one water power. All right. So they got the water card and all this is, is end game scoring for them. Because there's a symbol in the upper right of the card, that means they're going to get a victory point at the end of the game, but they also went up on the water track. So they're actually ahead of me on the water track right now. Not that it much matters. So at the end of the game, they're going to get three points and then three points for every card they have with a water symbol and every dwelling they have on the board with a water symbol. All right. So that was their turn. Now they did trigger a battle with the golem because the golem was over here in the fortress. Golem comes in. I'm not going to bother rolling dice this time because we know it's four dice to zero. 
we know how that battle ends up coming out. Now, the AI does not get swords uh, when they go to the underworld because they can still fight from there. Um, so they don't get swords. They actually don't get resources at all. Um, really, anytime it tells them to get a resource, they instead just get a victory point. So it really does keep the AI pretty straightforward and simple. Well, I am everywhere I can be on the board, so I am going to pull my people off. Now, if I can, I would love to get two scrolls to be able to build a dwelling here. Let's see how that's going to work. All right, so I'm going to pull my wizard off. And a wizard works like any other warrior, uh, worker here for gathering. I believe I'm still ahead in wind, so I'm going to do this. That's going to get me a scroll and a potion if I am ahead in wind. If not, I still get the potion, but not the scroll. But I believe I'm ahead in wind. Let's see, where's wind? Yep, I'm the only one on the wind track. So certainly that means I'm ahead. All right, and then next thing I am going to do is pull off of this realm. Now again, I would love to get another scroll. Is there any way, any way, any way for me to get a scroll? There is not. Am I ahead in fire still? Because if I'm ahead in fire, I'm gonna go ahead and place here and then not only will, let's see, I am ahead in fire. Because again, I'm the only one on the fire track. So I'm going to get a hammer. And why not? I'm going to put this two potion thing here. So I'm going to get a hammer and two potions. And I'm up to four potions. Uh, which means, I'm uh, again, I can only hold a maximum of five. But now I can't turn this in for two potions. These Now that I've slotted them in, they are permanently there unless I decide to replace them later on. And I'm going to pull my last worker off again. Unfortunately, I'd love to have been able to build a dwelling there, but I can't because I didn't have the two scrolls. So I'm going to place this one here. But instead of just getting a potion, because I have quite a few of those and quite a few ways to get it, I'm going to place this here. So I get a card every time I go there. Let's see what my new one is. Lord of War. At the end of the game, this card is worth three victory points if your marker is on the final space of the glory track or a higher number of space than other players. All right, so, oh, so something I have forgotten to do. We'll take care of it right now. Every time you win a battle, you're supposed to go up on the glory track. So they've won, I've won a battle against them. Remember the one down here, I won. They won a battle against me up here. So we both move up one on the glory track Thankfully, it doesn't change the relative scores here at all. We both move up one, two. Um, yep, so that's how that works. Next, we're going to get a resource of our choice when somebody wins a combat. Then they get to go up on any of these tracks they choose. Then they get one of these tokens. We'll talk about them, which can be used to gain victory points, gain cards, gain resources, gain whatever you want. Or sometimes you're going to slot them into these cards to get extra special bonuses from them as well. And then so on as you move up the track. So what this card says is if you're at the end of the track or you're the furthest ahead on the combat track, you get three victory points at the end of the game. So this is telling me to build dwellings. This one's telling me to, um, to, be a warmonger and make sure you win those wars don't just don't just have battles but win the battles um now when you defeat a monster you have a choice you can either move up on that track or you can gain a uh an elemental power in that in that section all right so let's move on to so that was me pulling off the board so guess what ghost get a turn they're gonna place here uh so what was their whole card they're going to place there and then they get to construct a dwelling. They cannot construct a dwelling here because I'm already there. So then they look around them to see if there's another person that they could build with. They have this person on the mill here, but they can't build here either because it's not an elemental plane. So they just lose that portion. But guess what? This golem doesn't like people moving next to him. Again, I could roll the dice. There's no reason to because warriors... Uh, or workers don't get dice when rolling against the Iron Golem. So this Iron Golem is just coming around and just beat sticking everybody. All right, so let's go ahead back. Oops. So at the end of my turn, I was supposed to, after recalling all these guys, put them in the ready area. Let's see. I'm going to put one of my regular workers on the board, obviously. Now I have some resources. Uh, let me see something real quick. So... 
any of these cards require potions two potions and two daggers i don't quite have that yet um which would be wall of water each time an opponent moves up on the water track you gain a potion so that would cost me potions but it would get me potions back this one requires scrolls scrolls and diamonds um all right, so what else could I spend my potions on? I could not use it there. Now I can use it here as one of the two things I discard to draw three cards. It's not the worst thing in the world. Oh, and I realized I had this healing card earlier. I could have returned somebody to my ready area after I lost that battle. Well, good to remember. Um, but for now, actually, I just said I wanted to get scrolls, it looks like. I'm going to go here and actually I'm going to hope to be able to build on this three scroll space here. So I'm going to take this. I'm not going to slot it in anywhere yet, but it is worth, this one is not an or symbol. This is an and, so I'd get both symbols, uh, you know, each time you use that. So I may even replace this or who knows, I mean, maybe the card or maybe this, but probably not. All right. So let's do the AI turn, ghost turn. Alrighty, Ghost Roll 1, placing unit in the Realm of Order. Alright, so they were there, they placed with me. Guess what that's going to do? That's going to start a combat with me. Uh, they got the uh, Treasure Token and... Oh, they also place a new realm. So if you notice on the bottom of this card, it says place a new realm. So they are placing realms, and I get to pick where it goes. Let's see. I want it, again, adjacent to my dwellings that I already have, because that's going to help me in combat. And then that auto-populated. All right, so this does start a combat, though. All right, not the greatest thing in the world. I have one. They have one. Let's start there. But, this is the big but, they have two in the underworld. So they're going to get two more dice for that. Do I have anything I can do? Huh. All right. So that's something to remember because I am. Oh, no, I'm not because that's this track here. So I'm going to have to spend a scroll on this because there's no way for me to move up on this light track. Oh, that's what it is. This is light and darkness. This is chaos and order. So this is the order track here. So you'll notice there are cards in the game that we don't even have those elements in the game um, because this is actually on this spot here. So there's no way I can get on that track, so I'm going to have to spend a scroll to move up one on the glory track. But for one scroll, I can move up and get any resource I want, including another card or whatever else. It's pretty expensive, though, because it's a scroll and a card to move up that one spot, but it might be worth it later in the game to get certain things. All right, so let's see how this combat goes. Um, so they have, again, three dice to my one. Am I going to spend a sword? Sure. I'll spend a sword and... Worst case scenario, I get it back. Let's see if I can beat him. Ooh, 1-1-4. One, one, I rolled a 4-3. So this is a good example of combat here. So fours are tied. My three beats their one. So I actually win this combat. So I send them to the underworld. Part of the reason I wanted to do this is because I did want to win combats um, to move up on the glory track for my end game score. So now that I got that, Let's see what I was looking to build on the board. I would love to get scrolls here. So definitely doing that. That gives me, because I'm still on this space on the board, it gives me another scroll. Now I'm going to try to move away to a place that they won't place there. Um, so they got an upper right, they got an upper left. Uh, so I don't want to place here. Well, I don't want to place there anyway for several reasons. Uh, but I definitely don't want to place here. Maybe I will place here. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to place... My next one here. That's the portal. So they're pretty likely, in fact, are they guaranteed? No, they could get to the mage tower, but they're pretty likely to actually just end up there because they want to place here and here. So that's not great for me either. So it is going to start a fight here, which I will probably lose. But the nice part about that is that I get to buy uh, a new unit or bring a new unit on the board. So I can't afford my dragon, unfortunately. I don't have... Oh, I do have two hammers. I don't have a sword. I can't discard anything to get it. But, but to get a normal worker, it's one of any resource. And I could just discard a card. I could discard Holy Ward or Create here. 
uh, create on your turn. Choose an adventure card in the dungeon tray, pay its cost, and add it to your tableau. Huh. So that's these. I can add one of those to my tableau. That's pretty good. Um, all right, so I'm going to pay for one of these. I could spend any resource. So I got a lot of potions right now. I'm just going to spend a potion to get that uh, worker. Uh, and that is back on my board now. So I'm back up to having a third worker. And actually, if you consider the wizard a worker, I have that too. So let's see what happens. Probably going to end up on me. Ghost roll four, placing on a portal, triggering a battle. Okay, so this battle, they got one more person in there so i only have one now you do have the choice everybody has a choice of bringing all adjacent workers in the ai automatically does it that's just what they do i could bring this worker in but i actually want to build a dwelling here so i'm not going to bring that worker in. i'm just going to probably lose this but who knows maybe i roll a six and they don't roll a six nope didn't happen all right so my worker does go to the underworld they move up one and get a random resource, which just ends up for them being a victory point. Doop. And now we are tied. Next, I get to place on the board again. I may use my wizard to get out of dodge, because again, I don't want them triggering a battle in that one spot. Uh, and it, my, my options are kind of limited to where I can place at this point. So if I place here, they're more likely to go to Mage Tower or Dungeon. So I'm going to do that, which gives me this token, a little bit of flexibility. Uh, again, I could trade these in for resources at any time. Maximum I could have is four tokens here. But that's that. Let's do the ghost turn. All right. So the ghost plays here. They try to construct a dwelling. Why? Because the bottom of the thing says construct a dwelling. Well, again, they can't construct one here, and they can't construct one anywhere adjacent. Even if this had been an elemental realm, where they were here, they wouldn't be able to construct because you can only construct with workers. This is a warrior. Warriors cannot construct. Now, again, the warrior has two dice strength, so a little bit better at combat, but um, not good for uh, not good for building dwellings. All right, well, let's see what their options are. Um, so they're going to place to the right of wherever I place this worker, pretty much no matter what. Ooh, hold on doesn't affect anything that happened on the enemy turn, but this Iron Golem does come in and attack me. Um, so when the Iron Golem comes in, I get one dice. They get four dice. So this isn't looking <laughs> promising, but again, maybe I get lucky. Um, and actually when that happened, then that would have triggered this battle too. So I'm gonna do these two battles back to back. So I attack, or they attack me. <gasps> I rolled a six and they rolled nothing. So I actually defeat the iron golem. Um, so yeah, I mean, you can have one dice to four and, and win and you just saw it there. So never mind, the iron golem's not gonna attack them. So I have a choice now. I can go up on the combat track or I can go up on the light track. Well, I am definitely going up on the light track. Um, and that way I'll be first place in that one too. And the iron golem is gone. And there are cards that bring them back later, but that didn't happen right now. All right, so good. I did miss the Iron Golem going in. Um, and as you can see, there's a lot of stuff going on, me trying to talk my way through it and play everything. I've missed a couple things as we've gone. Um, but so far, I've caught everything and uh, gotten it right, I think. Uh, I'm sure I'll get comments afterward, but uh, please turn on the Klingon channels because that's where all the mistakes are going to, or rules errors are going to be corrected. All right, but so that was my turn. So that changes things because now I don't have to worry about that Iron Golem anymore coming in and attacking me. So that gives me a little bit more flexibility about where I wanna go, but reminder, they are gonna to go to the right of me almost definitely no matter where I place. So I could place here for a scroll, I could place here for a scroll. Here, they're just gonna put another one on the portal, who cares? Here, they could put one on the fortress. Uh, I'm going to put it here just in case it does trigger a battle at some point. Um, uh, and I'm going to get a scroll. And that's it. So I now do the ghost turn. Roll the two. Uh, or they roll a six. 
So they placed it on the portal and they got two magic cards. And again, they don't do anything with their magic cards. Those are victory points though. That's nine victory points they're getting at the end of the game. Uh, for every magic card they get, they get victory points. All right, so that was the ghost turn. They placed on wherever it told them to, the mage tower, and got those two magic cards. All right, so now it is back to my turn. And I do have somebody here. I could use my healing spell to gain my unit back, but I'm gonna wait on that one till I have like a lot of units in there. So this is a little bit out of order, but I'm just bringing this person right back. Um, they don't do anything, but I do wanna build a dwelling here. So let me start by doing that. I'm gonna pull this one off and go to dwell. All right, so for that one, I have to play three scrolls, one, two, three, which I do have, and I'm gonna build my dwelling there. Now this is gonna move the ghost, so I'm gonna pay attention now to where they are, <laughs> they're here, because it will move them anytime you place a token down. Uh, one of the quirks of the mod, but it's fine. All right, um, and then I have my wizard to pull off still, oh, wait, hold on. So I'm gonna score victory points, two, four, six. Again, two points for every adjacent um, ruin. So I'm gonna get six victory points for that, so they're at nine and I'm up to 15. And then I'm gonna pull my wizard back and let's see, what do I wanna build? I don't really need potions, but I believe I'm still first place on the wind track. And that will get me a scroll, which is, I'd like to get scrolls, I'd actually like to get swords too. I mean, so maybe I replace that. If I'm getting the scroll anyway, I could do a scroll hammer here. So let's see, first of all, am I first place on the wind track? Yes, I'm still the only one on the wind track. All right, so I am gonna place there. I'm going to replace this. Now I don't get these resources when I replace it, but I'm gonna replace it with the scroll hammer. So now I get a potion, a scroll, and a hammer. So that seems good to get all three uh, every time I go there. So I'm really need to make sure I stay first place on this wind track here, which means buying wind cards, and it means um, making sure I'm taking control of wind realms. Oh, so I scored this, but did I go up twice on this track? I doubt it. So I go up twice on this track and I am close to getting to the end of the track. When I get to the end, I get this gem over here, um, which again can be used to place on the board to get resources or be used to power cards uh, in your tableau. All right, I think that is everybody I have on the board. Uh, do, 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 do. Yep, that is all of mine. So we're gonna pull these off of here now. And I'm back to having two workers and one wizard. Um, so certainly buying or summoning guys might not be the worst idea in the world, but let's do the AI turn first. So they place their dragon here. They cannot construct a dwelling. Again, they look all around. They don't have any workers anywhere they could construct a dwelling. So they do not construct a dwelling. Um, and again, they would have only tried to do that because that's what their card told them to do. All right, so back to my turn. I would like to construct, let's see, do they have any dwelling options here? Yes, so they're, they would go left and try to construct a dwelling. So I can do my darndest to try to stop them from doing that. Um, and if I place here, I'll get a scroll, which I need to build a dwelling here. And I'm gonna do that. So I get a scroll because that's what it tells me to do here. And we'll do the ghost turn. Ghost cannot construct a dwelling. So they did, they rolled that six and placed here. Now, if you'll notice, actually every single one of these is blank right now. So they are gonna recall all their units next turn which is gonna score them a ton of points because they're gonna get one, two, three for all their ghosts and they're gonna get two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 victory points for their units on the board. Because again, for any of these ruined tiles, they're, oh, 11, 12. So they're getting 12 and three, they're gonna get 15 points. But the nice part is I don't have to worry about what they're gonna do next turn. I just don't wanna trigger a combat this turn. Um, I have a lot of resources. Should I try to buy one of these? I don't have swords. I do have scrolls, but I wanna use my scrolls to buy stuff. So I'm actually gonna see if I can get some more resources on the board. Um, 
Is there some place I could go for a really good token? I mean, this is a double hammer token. I can get there if I use my wizard, because remember, wizards can be... Um, but I really want a scroll. Is there anywhere that would give me a scroll? This place would give me a scroll. Okay, so I'm actually going to use my wizard, because wizards can teleport as far as you want. I'm going to get the scroll hammer. And that will be my turn. So the ghosts are going to do their turn. They got 12 victory points uh, for people on the board and three for people in the underworld. And that's all they do. They reset. Now, if they had built dwellings, you'll notice these are numbered. The number six worker wouldn't have been placed back um, if they had built a dwelling at any point. But they still haven't. So I'm not going to worry about that. All right, my turn. Uh, and I could place adjacent to either of these. I could just build my dwelling right now. Let me do that. I'm going to go to the mill and I'm going to build this dwelling here before I forget. So again, I'm going to move this, but it's not really putting a, a worker there. There's He's still at the mill. Uh, and I'm going to pay my two scrolls for that. And I am going to build that dwelling. So I am 50% of the way to building all the dwellings I need to end the game. Remember the other thing is if we get rid of all these tiles that ends the game so let's look at victory points first so i'm adjacent to one two three of these that's six victory points and one up on the wind track so six victory points they have jumped ahead on victory points but that's okay i get six of them and i move one up on the wind track so now all of my wind symbols are worth three victory points each kind of sweet uh, while I'm at it, while I'm at it, while I'm at it, I am going to, no, because that requires a scroll, scroll and I don't have any, I'm going to be done. That is going to be my turn. So we do the ghost turn now and ghost roll of three. So they put a unit on here and they gained a magic card, uh, ghosts place a new realm so do, 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 we get to place a new realm somewhere and I get to decide where it goes. No monster on this one. This is another scroll one. I'm going to put this adjacent to my buildings over here because uh, I got a dwelling there. So that will help me out. Now, this is a double wind. I definitely don't want them getting that, um, but they place that. Let's see, they place their worker here, which doesn't trigger anything else. And it is my turn. So, do I, am I out of workers already? I am, I only have my wizard and this one now because I just built a dwelling out of the other one. So, it doesn't really matter the order I pull them off. I am going to do this to get a potion. Now I'm maxed out there. I'm going to get a scroll and I'm going to get a hammer because again, there's no slash between these two. So I get all of it. Uh, and I could get a hammer and two potions, which I don't need. I think I'm actually going to get a magic card again by when I pull my wizard off either that, or maybe I use it to summon. Actually, that's probably a smarter thing. I'm going to summon. So I'm going to spend two potions to summon and I'm going to summon another uh, worker to my board. So I did want the card, but yeah, I don't think it was worth it at this point to do it. All right, so move my workers back and the AI gets a ghost turn. What are they gonna do? Roll four, placing unit in the mill. And that was it. It was just placed to the left, but there's nothing to the left, so they place here. All right, uh, what is that new tile? That's here. Huh, I would love to get that dwelling built two let's see they don't have so they're going to place to the upper left and place a new realm so i'm actually going to do what i just said i'm going to go here i'm going to get this scroll and again i could turn these two things in for scrolls at any point i want to um or a hammer in this case but i'm going to be done i'm going to do the ghost turn let's see what they roll because a lot of their stuff all right, so they're placing the dungeon and dungeon, excuse me, and they get a new adventure card. So they got up on the water track. So they keep going up these tracks too. I mean, we're not really, you know, paying attention to them going up, but they are going up and they're scoring victory points on those uh, as well. They're, so they're not doing a lot of building dwellings. I've done a good job of keeping them off the board that way, 
but they are certainly doing a good job of um, you know getting up some of those elemental tracks so let's see do I want to place a regular worker just adjacent to where I am spend any two to get two gold and remember gold is wild but I can also just go up here and get this are they gonna build no they're not so I am gonna do that I'm just gonna come over here get this scroll the other one would have given me two hammers oh so I gotta immediately turn something in so I'm gonna turn this one in to just gain a scroll not a problem done there now I do a ghost turn so they roll the six placing a unit in the fortress so they place somebody here uh, and that reshuffled all their cards and that's it all right so my turn I've got my wizard so the mill is kind of where I want to go to build a dwelling but what also wouldn't be bad is going here now this would start a fight do I really want to start a fight right now I could just go here I mean I can go anywhere again this is my wizard so I can really teleport around the board at my discretion spend two resources to get I mean I'd love to build some of this stuff these require scrolls and diamonds though two things I don't have all right so I just really need to build up my scroll and diamond reserve so I'm gonna go here which gives me a scroll because here's the thing I want to build this dwelling here and that's gonna cost me three scrolls so I'm needing a lot of scrolls to do stuff uh, now because of the way my faction works I actually could have built here as well um, but I chose not to uh, because I can go to places my own guys are normally I wouldn't be able to do that all right so let's do the ghost turn oh and they are starting to fight here all right so let's see what the ghost did so they placed the upper left and placed a new realm so let's have them place their new realm do, do, do. still no monsters on any of these realms interesting uh, this one requires a lot of potions and I'm gonna build here so yeah I'm gonna put this right here right next to where I'm building right now all right, so let's see if I win this fight. I don't really care too much. Uh, they are gonna pull all of their people in though uh, from adjacent realms and that is it. So they have two to my one right now and that's actually not true. So let me uh, restate that. I got one because wizards only roll one dice even for my faction. Uh, it tells you how many combat dice they roll even though it's my captain. But because I have a dwelling here, I do get a second dice. And then I could add swords, but actually, as you guys see, I don't have any swords, so it's just going to be two to two. Let's, oh, wait a minute. Do they have anybody? No, they don't have anybody in the underworld. So it's just two to two. Let's roll it out. Oh, all right. Fours we tie, and I got a four to their one. So I am definitely getting lucky on some of these combat here, but I'm not going to complain. So this is going to be two victory points for them, but I mean, that's best case scenario is two victory points. I am going to get to move up on the combat track because I just won a combat. So I get my choice of advancements on this board. Where do I want to advance? Um, I think I want to advance in wind. So I'm going to go up one over there in wind. All right. So that is the end of that combat. So they attacked me. Did anything else happen on that turn? Place uh, gain a magic card, triggering a battle, place a new realm. So I did place a new realm. So we did all of that stuff. Yep, because we placed there, placed a new realm, and triggered a battle because they were in my spot. All right, so that was the ghost turn. And now I don't have any units to place anymore. So I'm going to start pulling people off. First one off is my wizard. What is the action that he is going to do? I think he's just going to dwell. Yep. So wizard will dwell. Uh, so I'm going to build a dwelling. Wow. Two away from the end of the game. All right. So where's the ghost token right now? Because I don't want to mess that up. Uh, so ghost token is up here. All right. And I'm going to dwell here. That cost me three scrolls. One, two, three but i go two up on the air track one two which actually puts me to the end of the air track so i get this which again i could use up here at any time i'm not going to do that quite yet though i'm going to just save it in my reserve um 
because I could also use it to trigger to power some of these cards. Actually, none of them require it to power right now, but that's okay. I don't care. I am going to still save it because I don't really need anything on that board. Maybe I save it to get like scrolls or potions or something to buy stuff up there because I am going to need to buy stuff or to like power me up for combat. So I went up two on the air track. I also get my victory points. So there's a dwelling adjacent and a ruin adjacent. So that's four victory points. Now, even if this had not been my dwelling, I still would have gotten two victory points for it. They want you to build dwellings adjacent to other dwellings. So that's four victory points. And guess who just took the lead? One, two, three, four. Nice. And with my end game scoring cards, I'm actually getting three for being ahead. I built four dwellings. So if you remember, I have this vast empire card. Uh, yeah. And this is going to be pretty easy for me to get as long as I can protect it. Uh, so I just got to be smart with my placement. But I've got two adjacent realms. So I'm going to get I'm going to get some dice there. But as you've seen, it doesn't always matter. All right. I'm going to go here to get a potion to get a scroll and to get a hammer. Now I'm maxed out on hammers, so something for me to remember. By the way, all those resources are down here in the tray. Um, I mean, the components for the actual game, I mean, maybe I'll show you guys later. They're amazing. Um, that's one of the best parts about this game. I mean, first of all, as you've seen, it's pretty easy. Yes, there's a lot of stuff going on, so it's easy to miss things potentially, but it's pretty straightforward as you've seen. You just place a person and do, you know, if you take your time, um, and you're not trying to talk your way through everything, you know, it's, it's pretty straightforward. All right. So now let's do a ghost turn. Cause I just pulled all my stuff off. Choose a destroyed monster to return to its lair. Oh my gosh. All right. So they placed something on the portal and then choose a destroyed monster and return it to its lair. Any units or other monsters in the lair are sent to the underworld. So the iron golem is back. This is his layer. You can see there's a monster token for each of the elements. This is the one for um, this like light element. Uh, so is the iron golem and that's the only monster space on the light. So nobody was on his space though. He doesn't destroy the dwellings, but uh, ooh, they get a dragon up there at the portal. So I guess I won't be summoning any units anytime soon. All right, so back to my turn and actually these would be back on my board. Did I have somebody killed? No. Oh, that's right. I turned him into a dwelling. <laughs> All right. So I have to be careful. Don't go adjacent to this person if I don't want to get attacked. And again, not, I mean, no. Well, first of all, I can't go here. Uh, only if I had a warrior. So if I go here, I would be adjacent to two dwellings. If I did that, I would certainly want to do it with my wizard. But here's the thing. When he comes in and triggers the battle, anybody adjacent can join in that battle. That does not include just people engaged in the battle. So again, it's not just this iron elemental that would come in or this uh, this iron golem that would come in. It would also bring in this dragon and this uh, worker as well. Now the worker wouldn't roll dice because he's with a giant golem, but that is just a whole lot of mess that I don't want to get into right now. So I think I'm gonna go here and try to build here pretty quickly. So I'm gonna go here with one of my workers now what are the odds of them coming to my spot upper left yep that would do it so the most common role lower so that wouldn't do it thankfully uh, lower right would do it so literally all but fives fours and fives are going to bring them into here and start a fight but again i do have some people here oh but they have people in the underworld too oh wait a minute wait a minute wait a minute so four and five would be a reset anyway so literally four and five would be a reset, but everything else would start a fight with me. Well, I might not be the brightest bulb in the uh, <laughs> in the deck, whatever you want to call it. I'm just going to take this and uh, immediately cash it in to draw a card. Let's see what my new one is. Ooh, perform the ritual. To complete this quest, you must cast at least one spell, gain two victory points for each spell cast this turn. Okay, so... I have to cast a spell. Guess what I have? I have Holy Word. Now I have nobody dead, so I almost, almost want to get somebody dead so I could cast Holy Word. Oh no, the Holy Word just advances me on the track. This one here, create, play on your turn, choose an adventure card in dungeon tray. Oh, so this one, I need to be up on the light track to at least three, which I certainly am. Oh, okay. So I can actually cast both of these spells 
Uh, this one would be free. Pay its cost and add it to your Tableau. Is there anything I want to add here? I don't really have, so it's a lot of scroll cost here and I don't have diamonds either. So no, I can't do that yet. But it's something to think about. Um, getting some, oh, I'm sorry. When I placed here, I got the card. That's what I got. All right, so it'd be nice to get the double scrolls. I can do that. Remember, I'm a wizard, which can go in the same space as one of my things, but let's see what happens on the ghost turn first. So they rolled a one, two, or three. So they are going to have placed upper left and build a dwelling. Upper left, guess what? Is there, and they build a dwelling. So that actually did not trigger a fight. I'm sorry. So because it happened kind of simultaneously, um, let's see, roll two, placing in the water realm, gaining a water treasure token and triggering a battle. The ghost constructed dwelling. So they trigger a battle, but the battle doesn't actually take place. I think is how that works. You may want to, um, that's something I'm going to need to look up. Actually, let me do that real quick. So that's in the ghosts. They do cover that situation when they trigger a battle and then immediately build. You know, it's somewhere in here. Thank you, Breaking Games, by the way, for making a great game. So they, they're they gonna, so when they built that dwelling, they moved up on the track just like we would. Um, so again, they just got two up on the water track, which is not necessarily great for me, uh, cause that got them to the end, um, which they immediately took that and put it here to score three victory points. So whenever they get these tokens, they immediately play them. Oh, I keep forgetting I have one of those. I could get swords. I could get scrolls. I can get whatever resources I wanted. Ah, maybe I should have built that dwelling. Well, you know, too late for that. All right. There is a rule. It said it initiates a battle here, but they still built that dwelling there. So I'm going to say it initiates a battle, but we don't actually fight because they did build that dwelling right away. So we're not going to fight first, which is fine. I'm, I, again, look in the... Klingon channel for rules corrections if I did that wrong, but worst case scenario actually would have been good for me because um, they would not have fought. All right, I'm going to take my wizard and I'm going back here. That's right. I want that double scroll. And I immediately turn something in. I will turn this one in for a gem. And I keep forgetting I have these gems too, so I can potentially do some stuff up here. All right, so let's do a ghost turn. Do, 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 do. They roll a three, which puts them there. They cannot construct a dwelling. So they look to the watcher and all around, well, all around is dwellings. So they cannot build a dwelling. Oh, by the way, they also got the four victory points for building adjacent to two of my stuff. So uh, yeah, no, this mod works pretty well. It's, it's actually doing all this stuff for me, which is great. All right, so now it's time for me to pull off the board. Well, I wanted to build here, but I can't. Do I really just have these two workers now? All right, well, this is something I can remedy when I pull the first one off. I'm still first place in air, so I'm gonna get all three of these. I get a potion, I get a scroll, and I get a hammer. And then when I pull my wizard off, I'm gonna go to building a worker. It is my last worker, so I have to pay three resources. They do not have to be the same. Oops, I had too many hammers. So let's say I did the opposite order. And so that's two hammers and a potion I paid. So I would have done it in the opposite order. I would have built my worker first, paid the two hammers and the potion, and then gotten a potion, a hammer, and a scroll. Same thing, just different order. Um, wouldn't have been affected at all. The ghosts still get to do a turn. So let's see what they do. All gross go ghosts regroup. So when they regrouped, they got uh, six points for units on ruins and two for their units in the underworld. Alrighty, so they are probably going to place a realm here. I'm, all right. I really want to place adjacent to some of my stuff. And it's adjacent to one. And build this with two potions. So not going to overthink it. I'm going to do this. And I will get a scroll. Yeah, I'll get a scroll. All right. So that was that. 
so I still have all these things, and they are going to do their ghost turn. So they rolled a four, and they placed to the lower left of me. Oh, stop. Keep messing this up. So he comes in, and we do a battle first. Uh, I have no way of winning this, so I'm just going to lose. I get put over here, and I get a sword. Then they place theirs in here. They lose, and they're placed over there. Because, uh, again, this Iron Golem. Oh, I actually got one dice against them because of my dwelling. So, let's see. Maybe I don't lose. Watch, I'm going to win now. Uh, so I don't get one for my worker, so they got a six to my five. So nope, I did not win that battle. All right. Uh, do I want to clear some of these cards out? have enough scrolls now. All right, so that was the adventurer's turn. I can do this on my turn, though. Let's see. Uh, so I can buy this. Endless Decanter. Once per turn is a free action when placing a treasure token on one of your tableau cards, gain one resource, choosing it from the resources depleted on the token. So once per turn is a free action when placing a treasure token on one of your tableau cards. So that's adding it to a tableau card, gain one resource, choosing it from the resource depicted on the token. So I, if I keep changing out these tokens here, I can do it every turn and get the resource depicted on the token. So I could change these out. So like not get the double potion here, instead get the double scroll and I would get a scroll for doing that. That is interesting. Uh, all right, three scrolls. Each time you complete a quest, gain two victory points. Huh. I mean, I'm gonna complete this quest possibly, but I don't have three scrolls anyway. Yes, I don't know that's going on. All right, three scrolls here. At the end of the game, gain two victory points for each sword icon on tokens above and one for each sword in your supply. So if I put sword tokens, do I even have any? I do have one, okay. You know what, I'm doing it. All right, so first things first, I'm gonna do this quest. To complete this quest, you must cast this, at least one spell. All right, I'm gonna cast this spell. I can cast it for free because I'm at least three up on the light track and uh, choose one adventure card in the dungeon tray, uh, pay its cost and add it to your tableau. So one, two, three scrolls to get this. Do, 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 this one. And add it to my tableau. Pay its cost and add it to your tableau. So I think I still go up one on the light track. I think whenever I do that, I go up one on the light track. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna get this. Oh, I keep forgetting these things. Uh, let's see. Actually, I am going to put one up here. No. I was thinking I wanted the scrolls to buy another one, but I'm not buying them normally. I'm buying them through the, uh, through this card. All right. Oh, no, I do want to do that. Yes. So I'm going to go up here and get the double scroll. Boom. One, two scrolls, which allows me to cast this spell. Play on your turn, advance one space on the glory track. So I'm going to do that to advance one space on the glory track, which gets me here. Actually, I was the one who got here. Um, yes. So now I am to here. Uh, and I get a resource of my choice. I'm going to get a diamond because... I want to get this card up here because I could trade in a card when I come here for three victory points and whatever's on the token. All right, so I want sword tokens down here. So I'm going to just put this one down here so I don't forget to do it later. Um, and again, I'm going to get two victory points for that at the end of the game. So right now I've cast these two spells and completed this goal. I do have another spell, so healing. So again, it's a spell because it's got the little spell icons in the top left. Play on your turn, gain one victory point for each of your units in the underworld and return them to your ready area. So 
I'm going to get one victory point for this and return him to my ready area. By the way, as you've seen, I've gotten a little bit behind on victory points here. Um, and we're getting not quite to the end of the game, but we're getting there. But I'm actually getting a lot of victory points for this. So I got that. I got the bump on the glory track, right? Which got me a diamond. Yep. All right. So, and then for this card, I get two points for each spell I cast. Well, I just cast three spells. So I just got six victory points. Boom. 26 to 32. Nice. I haven't even done anything. I just did those things. All right. So I'm going to place on the board. Let's see. I have two diamonds and I could get a third diamond. Let me see something. Can I afford some of this stuff? Yeah, if I was going to do that, I should have done it already. So I'm going to try to get some scrolls to do some of these other objectives. So where are the best place to grab scrolls? Well, this is a scroll and a potion, so I'm going to do that. Uh, oh, and I've got some scrolls too. All right. So that's that. Do I want to... Not yet. Not yet. Oh, I could get two gold. Well, shoot. Well, they, so if I was playing against other players, I would have definitely put my thing up here. But because I'm not playing against other players, the AI goes in order from left to right. So the next thing they'll get is two cards, which would be worth two victory points. Then a card and a gold, which again is worth two victory points. All of these resources are with victory points to them. So they're not going to go for the two gold. So I've got some options. Plus, I may want to go for the swords later because at the end of the game, swords are worth victory points to me. Gold is not, although again, gold's a wild resource that I can use for anything. All right, so I placed on the board. Let's do a ghost turn and see what they rolled. All right, so they did this. So they're placing lower left and they gained a new adventure card. So when they played lower left of me, guess what that means? That means they come to my spot and that triggers a battle. Well, they've got nobody in here. So let's count up the dice. I've got one, they've got one. I've got one, two dwellings. Thank you dwellings. They have one dwelling. All right, so it's going to be three dice to two. Now I could add a sword, and I am going to add a sword. Um, they don't add swords, so four to two, and let's hope. All right, both of us rolled sixes. I rolled a five as well, and they got a one. So another great victory for me in the battle, uh, which means I move up one more, which lets me go up another track. Ha. Huh. Um... Let's go up fire. I want to stay ahead on that track. Um, and I'm guessing we're going to see something soon come out. Uh, you know, when this dwelling comes out, I have a feeling there's fire because there's not a lot on the board. Oh, there's this one. So I can try to get over there um, on my next turn. But anyway, so it is me again. I got a wizard. Where do I want to put my wizard? I don't want to buy cards up top. So, yep, yeah, I'm going to go here. So this allows me to place new dwelling on the board. There you go. There's another monster. Uh, so again, I'm going to place it next to two of my dwellings. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Didn't I have a dwelling here? Why do I feel like I had a dwelling there? Well, no, I got four on the board. I guess not. Uh, all right. Oh, that's right. That's right. I had a dwelling on the monster space, but the monster moved to attack. All right, so there's a monster here, but he doesn't come in and immediately come and attack. Ooh, and it's the monster from the front of the box. That is a nasty looking one. That is the dread crocodile. Uh, let's see. So they are erratic when unit is, so the chain means it happens when he's dominated, which means you can actually control these monsters. We haven't seen a way to do it yet. Um, but when a unit is placed in the realm adjacent to a dread crocodile, the dread crocodile moves into the realm directly opposite the placed unit, if possible. If you, wait, wait, what? When a unit is placed in a realm adjacent to the dread crocodile, the crocodile moves into the realm directly opposite the placed unit, if possible. If it cannot, it moves into the realm of the newly placed unit. So I guess that, that means if I place here, he doesn't attack me. Instead, he jumps here. Oh, so the AI wants to place here, so it jumps it into my space. That is interesting, and I just set it up so that could happen. 
Uh, so let's see if this dread crocodile jumps in, uh, well, jumps me, to say the least. Okay, um, so I place there. So I place the one realm. Now I get to buy two things. All right, so this is where, yes, I definitely want to buy this. So for three gems, I'm going to buy this and add it to my realm. Yeah, I'll put it here. Okay. All right. So one, two, three gems. Going to add that to my realm. And can I afford anything else? Your dragon has the aggression power as if it were a warrior, meaning you can immediately place it on the board into somebody else's realm. This would move me up the wind track. This, once a turn as a free action, you could spend three swords to move up the uh, this track. Which isn't the worst thing, because I can actually get three swords just by placing it. All right, I definitely want to get that. So that costs two hammers also. Oh, yeah, I have two hammers. Awesome. So there's two hammers. So that's the second one I'm buying. If you don't buy two, you do have to take a card and put it to the bottom of its stack. Uh, so two are going to cycle every time you do it. So I do go up one on the light track, but I'm actually all the way at the top of the light track. So that card is actually worth five points to me also, because remember, you score points for every symbol you have at the end of the game. And the end of the game is getting near, so uh, that would be five points. So that's pretty sweet. Okay, so we are going to... So I placed the realm, and I bought two cards. So do I get the three swords to immediately move up the combat track and get this again? Nah, I mean, it's I don't need to do it. There's no rush to do that. All right, so let's do the ghost turn. Okay, so this is not great. So they did exactly what I was hoping they wouldn't do. Um, they went to the lower right, which goes here, and they are going to place a new realm. So let me do that before anything else. I want these near mine, but not near theirs, if possible. Oh, there's going to be another monster here, too. Oh, man. <laughs> so we got another monster out on the board. We got the Demon of Might. All right, so let's do these combats. Um, so this crocodile jumps over him to me. Uh, so we're about to have a fight. So let's do my fight first. So I've got a wizard and three towers. That's four dice. And the dread crocodile rolls five dice, which is the max that they can roll. So that's that. Do I want to spend swords? So I'm going to do this and get three swords for sure. One, two, three. So the question is, do I spend them for this combat? And I kind of feel like I do. So again, I got one, two, three. Oh, he comes in also. Oh, no, no, wait. Because he's about to get destroyed. Well, actually, so if he comes in, then he won't trigger the movement of that other one. Yeah, I'm, just so I don't get confused. I'm going to move this in and destroy him. Oop. So he won't join that battle. Although with then this... Now, monsters don't trigger other monsters coming in. Uh, all right. So we've got my four against their five. I am going to spend two swords. This is probably stupid because I need those swords for the end of the game, but I'm doing it. Doing it. Uh, I rolled a six. They rolled a six. They rolled two fives. My next highest is a four. So apparently a waste to use those swords, but I'm going to get one of them back because I did go to the underworld. And that happened there. All right. So that was the dread croc making me into just dead. Uh, so let's see what the Demon of Might does. Immolate. When this Demon of Might moves into or is in a realm with a dwelling, the dwelling's owner must discard a victory point or lose. So when it moves into or is placed in, so it wasn't placed in, but and it hasn't moved into, but it's probably going to move into one of mine at one of these points. Uh, so must discard a resource or lose victory point. Fire resistant. Fireballs may not be used against this demon. All right. 
So I have one more worker to place. There's monsters everywhere on this board. Uh, and I have to place adjacent to this worker right here. Huh. Most of those will trigger a combat. This is the only place I can cower. Um, but then the ghosts are likely to attack me. But I'm doing it anyway. I'm going to place here. I'm going to get a scroll. Hide in my little corner. Uh, do, 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 do. So we need swords, we need scrolls, and we need hammers. All right. So I place there. That moved the ghost there. Let's do a ghost turn. Yup. So the ghosts were would have just been placed to the right, but instead is placed in my location because, of course, they are. Because it's fighting time, apparently. It's that, that point of the game. Um, so they get one, two dice for their... Uh, worker and their um, oh and I am going to bring mine in uh, because again you can pull from all adjacent uh, I am gonna bring my other worker in so I get one two three four dice to start so they're two to my four I like that start but they also have three in the graveyard and again they're ghosts so they don't care where they are they're just gonna fight uh, I am gonna spend my two swords to get my last two dice and pray it is enough five two six and this is the thing some people don't like about the game is the luck of combat but it seems to balance out okay i did roll a six their highest is a five uh so yep that is glorious victory placing them in the underworld keeping my two on the board the reason it was so important for me to do that is because i want to pull them off and do stuff and i figured worst case scenario even if i lost i would have gotten two more swords which might not have been the worst thing in the world for end game scoring stuff, but that's what I did for now. Um, let's see. Oh, this is the last tile. So again, end of the game. This is battle scoring, free actions. I don't know. Do, 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 do. So let's see how the end game is triggered because that's about to happen. And maybe I want to do it myself uh do 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 because do, i don't want them to necessarily pull off the board again scoring a whole bunch more victory points i'm pretty close and i've got these n2 goals and i've got a lot of points on the board so i don't necessarily want too many more turns uh the underworld the glory track warden i think everybody gets one more turn once the end of the game is triggered including the player who triggered the end of the game uh, uh, end of the game there we are all right, so dwell the land. Single player has their sixth dwelling. Oh, I do want, I do want another dwelling on the board if I can. Discover all realms. When the last realm is drawn by any player, the end of the game is triggered. Once the end of the game has been triggered uh, by either player, consisting of their sixth dwelling or by drawing the last realm tile, each player takes one more turn, including the player who did it. Okay, so we are getting close to the end of the game, and I want to build at least one more dwelling. Uh, cause that'll get me up to five. Uh, I mean, I can't do it right now. So let me just pull my people off the board. So I have two to pull off again, one at a time. What am I looking for here? I'm, I'm looking to build in either the fire realm or the water realm. Oh, I'd love to get this token. That's going to require some fighting though. That's okay. Maybe I just, Oh, here you go. There's another one up here. Uh, so yeah, I, I would like scrolls to be able to build there. All right, so I'm pulling off one of my workers. I'll get a potion, a scroll, and a hammer. So scrolls are now maxed out. Uh, I'm going to pull my other one off. And I'm going to draw a card. Oh, I could do this discard a card for three victory points but all my cards are really getting me victory points right now so i'm gonna do this and draw a card and hope for something good uh the plague all right so we aren't using darkness so i would have to use two potions but as we can see i got a million so it doesn't matter play on your turn move all units in elder veil to the underworld for each potion a player spends they may keep one of their units in elder veil this is a nasty nasty card for taking 
everything off the board. It is great for exactly right now when I have no units on the board. I could literally pull off their all their units off the board. Now it is expensive. Um, you either have to be on the darkness track or spend two potions. Um, but in multiplayer, it is a brutal card, just absolutely brutal. But let's go ahead and do a ghost turn and see what they do. Uh, all right, so they just placed one. Uh, they placed it out here. Those aren't bothering me much. I'm just gonna go over here and then I'm gonna try to dwell, which I can right under it. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna come right here, take this double sword and I'm gonna take it and immediately slot it into this one. Cause remember I get two victory points for each sword on the tokens above. Uh, so yep, slot that right in and now do a ghost turn. Ghost cannot construct a dwelling. They roll a one. So they placed here on the mill. So I can actually go here and initiate a fight right now. I would build my dwelling first. That doesn't seem like a bad thing to me. N none of that sounds bad to me. So I think I, oh, or I could just plague him off the board. Move all units in Elder Vale to the underworld. So, I mean, it's good and bad. Yes, I take their units off. The bad news is that this, which scores nothing right now, would score. This, which is scoring two, we only gets one. But if we do get into a fight, all I mean, if they get into a fight, all their things are going to be maxed out anyway. Yep, I'm plaguing. Oh, that takes mine off, but I can spend a potion to keep it. For each potion a player spends, they may keep a unit. Okay, so I'm going to spend two to cast a spell and one to keep my unit on the board. So I spent three total potions to basically destroy everything um now if i had taken my unit if i didn't care about building a dwelling here if i had taken my unit and plagued them off the board then i would have gotten a sword for that because literally every time you place a unit in the underworld you get a sword uh which is pretty cool all right i am going to place my wizard i don't know why maybe because i'll build here at the end of the game um it's possibility. All right, so, but I'm going to build this dwelling. So remember the ghost or whatever it's called is here. I'm going to build a dwelling for two scrolls. So one, two. I'm going to put this back. I'm going to build this dwelling. Yeah, because I would like to build my sixth dwelling for sure. No question about it. Um, so I build that dwelling there. So if, yeah, if I can get that, uh, that would be great. All right, so I go up one on the light track. Well, I'm all the way at the top of the light track, so that doesn't do any good. Um, but I'm going to get two victory points, four victory points, because I'm next to two ruins. So let's go ahead and get those four victory points. Catching up again. One, two, three, four. Um, yeah, and let's see what happens on the ghost turn. Uh, so, do, 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 do. so the ghosts placed on the dungeon, and they got a new adventure card. Uh, which move them up on order, which means they are at the top of order along with me, uh, which doesn't really matter in any way. Oh, did we just have a fight? We didn't have a fight. That's right. I just moved them off the board. Uh, so they got that card. So that's going to score for them at the end of the game. I mean, they're going to have some end game scoring too. <sighs> yeah. All right. Well, I'm going to pray here that I get to build this. Do I have another gem anywhere? No. Can I get a gem when I pull my things off? No. So I don't have any way of getting a gem. So going here isn't great because I'm going to need two gems. I'm going to get one gem for going there. Um, if I place here, if I place here, I can trade in two things to get some magic cards, which wouldn't necessarily be the worst thing in the world. Those can score at the end of the game. Oh, look at there. Uh, <laughs> wow. There's a shark coming out of the water. Four potions, though. Bay sharks. Take one treasure token from the display pile and add it to your supply. With orb, take a second treasure token. So, um, from the display pile. So, I think that's these. I don't know. Either way. It's pretty good so you have to bring a wizard back for that though um yeah i don't even know what that means display pile anyway i'm not gonna get that 
Uh, two scrolls, two hammers, not going to get that. Wait, is one of these supposed to be flipped up? Oh, it is. Uh, three swords or three scrolls. Okay, the odds of me getting that aren't high. Oh, do I want to fight? I really. Oh, wait a minute. This dragon. Oh, no, no, no. Wait, that dragon was just placed there, right? Were they just placed there? Yes. All right, that dragon was just placed there. Let's say he should have come off the board too. All right, I'm going to place here and pray to God that I find a way to get a gem. I don't think it's going to happen, um, but we'll see. I got one gem. There might be a way. I uh, don't trigger combat. Maybe if we fight and win. Wait, did I just fight and win? No, I didn't. That's right. Oh, wait. Wait, 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 wait. I think I just fought and won when I placed this. Oh, no, they went to the dungeon. That's right. I decided not to fight there. All right. I'm just trying to think. If I get this, I can get the two gold coins. So that'll be good. So I actually almost want a fight here. Um, so what happens? They rolled a six, which placed their wizard on the board. So where did their wizard? Oh, there is a fight. Okay. So this is actually good. I want to win this fight. All right. So I'm bringing my wizard in. Although the odds of me winning this are like nothing. But I want swords either way because they've got all these guys. So they're they're definitely rolling six. Um, and I'm going to roll one, two, three for my dwelling. I mean, you could still win. You never know. You could still win this combat. Um, I, I don't mind losing though because I do get swords for these people. Uh, but it's going to be a wasted turn bringing them back. So we'll see. They rolled a six, my highest is a three, so I definitely lose both. So one and two, and I get two swords. So that's one, two swords. And my next turn is gonna be pretty worthless because it's just gonna be pulling them back to my player board. All right, so let's do a ghost turn. So the ghost did a regroup action um, because they rolled a one. They didn't have any of those on the board. You'll see they built a dwelling now. So their number six worker did not come back. Um, so they just scored for all their people. Uh, let's see, how many points did they get? Six for units in the underworld and two for a unit on the board. So they just got eight points. So they jumped ahead again. So again, the question becomes, let's see. So upper left or right. So if I build here, there's actually no way they come on me. And that gets me another gem. All right, I'm definitely doing that. All right, so I come here. I'm going to get another gem. That's going to let me build my sixth dwelling. Uh, and wizards can go anywhere. So let's do a ghost turn. This is going to be the end of the game coming up here. All right, so what did they do? They went to the right, and they built a dwelling there. Uh, but they went to the right with a wizard, and they didn't. So they couldn't build a dwelling because that was their six card. They already had that worker place, so or they didn't have a place. It's a dwelling. So, yep, they had no way of building a dwelling. But they did come here and move up on this blue track. By the way, as they're going up, they're getting advancements on the combat dial. They're get, drawing cards. Um, they're getting... Do, 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 do. What are the gears? I think those are those up, these cards up here. So they are doing stuff as they're advancing. Every time they get these tokens, they don't get the resources on them, but they're they're advancing on their tracks. All right, so I'm going to take my wizard, and I'm going to go to the mill, which lets me build a dwelling. All right, so I'm going to remember the ghost is up here. So I got to spend two gems for that, and that triggers the end of the game. But let me go ahead and score this first. So first I move up on the red track. So I just got an extra victory point for moving up on the red track. I also, this is another red place. So that's going to score. Um, but now I score for every adjacent dwelling and ruin. So it's one, two, three, four victory points for that. So I'm going to do that. One, two, three, four. Now the ghosts are going to do their turn. Let's see what that is. Ghost gain an air adventure card. Uh, and they place to the lower right. So they placed... Why didn't they place to the lower right? Oh, I'm sorry. They placed up here. So I have one turn remaining. And I've got my worker on the board. So all I can do is pull them off. 
going to pull them off. And clearly I'm going to, oh no, because I have to discard a card to do that. All right. So none of these are really worth any victory points. Um, because resources at the end of the game aren't worth victory points. I don't think they are any. Oh, no, yeah, unless it says it specifically. So the best thing I can do here is gather a card and hope it's a endgame victory card. Nope. Play on your turn. Summon a worker at no cost. Well, that's fine. Okay, so that is Dwellings of Eldervale. Let's see how we do final scoring. I'm going to do it, and then there is a final scoring button that we can use to calculate it. So let's kind of go through what final scoring is. This is final steps of battle, whatever else. So during the game, you're going to score about 20 to 40%. I love that they did this, by the way. And at the end of the game, you score 60 to 80% of your victory points. So unspent orbs, those are these little white things, are worth one victory point each. I definitely don't have any of those. Score marker for the position uh, of your elemental markers. So I'm going to score 5, 10, 14, 15, 16 for those uh, dwellings. Each dwelling is worth X times its elemental power. So again, I have five dwellings on the board. So that's the red ones are going to be worth what? Four points each. Yep. Uh, the blue ones are worth two points each and all the rest are worth five. So that's worth five. That's worth five. That's worth five, 10 because I have two uh, things there. And this one's worth five I believe. yeah that one's worth five also so uh yeah you can see where you're going to do a lot of end game scoring with those uh let's see uh tableau cards the starter card is worth its elemental power and your adventure cards are worth their ele elemental power now you can only have a maximum number of these adventure cards that score three equal to three times the number of dwellings you have on the board so I can only have, so if I only had one dwelling on the board, I would only score three of these cards. Now the AI does not work this way. I wish it did because it only built one dwelling. Um, but so because I have four, it's not a problem. I mean, I could have up to, what is it? 12 of these cards that would score. Um, but the way they score is the same. You look at the symbol in the upper right. So I believe red was worth five or four for me. White was worth five, four, uh, I think that one's worth five and this one's worth five. So uh, that's how those would score, including my starter card, vault scoring, bonuses of the adventure cards. Are those the ones in my hand? Oh, no, no, no. And then uh, prophecy magic cards. So these are the prophecy cards. I started with one. Uh, so I built five dwellings on the board. Oh, no, I built six dwellings on the board. So I get all 12 victory points from the last empire and land at war. Uh, I'm going to score... Oh, so uh, land at war, I'm the furthest ahead on this track. So I am going to score three victory points for that, which wasn't that great, honestly. Uh, I mean, I did a lot of work for that, but uh, what is it? No, no, no. Vault scoring. Bonuses on these adventure cards. Oh, yeah, he would have scored, by the way, here. So I'm going to give him two more victory points. I forgot. He won a battle at the end of the game. Uh, and there wasn't an orb here, so he would get two victory points. Okay, do 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 do. Uh, what did I just say? Oh, the vault cards. What's a vault card? This is a vault card. This grand armor here. So it says vault. At the end of the game, score two victory points for each of your sword icons on tokens above. So that's going to be six victory points, and then one for each sword in your supply. So that's another two. Um, so that that card actually worked out really well. So I'm going to do game score, and it's going to calculate it all up. So Pirates of Nightmare Cove is me, 133, the Ghosts, 127. So yeah, where did I get most of my points? I mean, Dwellings, I definitely had all six. Uh, tableau cards also. I mean, because I was so high up on my elemental markers, I had 16 points there. Uh, yeah, that, that worked out really well. Uh, vault scoring was eight, remember? Again, six points for those, two for having the swords. And magic cards in my hand were 15. This one was 12 and this one was three. So... Yeah, no, uh, this is Dwellings of Eldervale. I love it. I love the theme. I love the theme between behind each of the factions. Um, there are 16 factions in the game, so there's a lot of different variety there. Every time you play, you're playing with different elementals. 
uh, or different elements in the game, which is going to bring different monsters into the game. Like last time, we had a lot of chaos magic and death magic. Chaos magic just does random stuff. Uh, quite a bit of random stuff where death magic it allowed us to actually resurrect these monsters and use them for ourselves so i was actually using one of the monsters as my own creature for the entire game and it works just like any other pawn you place it on the board so there's a lot a lot of good stuff going on in this game uh, i really like it solo the only complaint i'm gonna have is I, there is no way as far as i know to very difficulty except they do have like easy medium and complicated factions so i guess you use more and more complicated factions to make it harder and harder for yourself the only thing i could think of i mean it's a real easy fix is you could also just add victory points to them at the beginning of the game you want to make it harder so you always start on the one spot they start on the two well you could start them on the seven give them five victory points start them on the 12 give them 10 victory points so if you want to challenge yourself, you can certainly give them victory points at the beginning of the game. It's not a perfect solution because, I mean, unless they're really dictating the pace of the game, which they aren't always going to do, uh, sometimes you can dictate the pace and, and rush it. Those 10 victory points are worth more if the game is rushed, and they're worth less if the game is not rushed. But we were close to ending the game in a second way as well, because if we were to place this, then that would have ended the game as well. So at any point earlier, I could have selected this tile right here to just end the game as well. But that's Dwellings of Eldervale. Uh, a little bit longer game, but I mean, I, I really like it as a solo game and I really, really like it as a competitive game. So that's it for this week. Thanks for joining us for this playthrough and I will see you soon. Bye.